Hello, my name's Jane. I teach archaeology here at Newcastle University. So I'm here today to talk to you about an exercise that children can do to support the history curriculum at primary school. This is an activity specifically concerning the Iron Age and even more specifically concerning Iron Age houses called roundhouses. The curriculum suggests all sorts of things that you could do with your class relating to the Iron Age and among the suggestions are hill forts and farming. The vast majority of people in the Iron Age didn't actually live in hill forts, they lived in small farming communities and everybody throughout the Iron Age lived in one kind of house, a roundhouse. And this exercise will help you to show your class what a roundhouse looked like and give them a sense of how, was, how one was built during the Iron Age and the kind of materials that were used and what it was like to live inside one. So what is a roundhouse? Well, a roundhouse looks like this. As you can see, it's a circular building. This model here has a roof on top of it, which I'll take off in a moment. But children are really interested in roundhouses because they're so unlike their own experience of a house. This doesn't have corners. It doesn't have a second story. And it doesn't have any windows. In terms of size, think of it as about the size of a modern um, two up, two down, modern build house. So some of them were substantially bigger, but big enough to hold, um, say, 10, 12, even more people um, at a time. So as you can see on the model, this one has a, a roof that's meant to look like thatch, and most of them were thatched in some way or another. And if I take the roof off, you can see inside um, a little bit more about how the house is made. So basically, the roundhouse has a base. This one here is made of stone. In the north of England, they tend to be made of stone because there were less trees. In the south of England, the, the base part would be made of timber very often. But on this one, we have a dry stone wall, as you can see, made into a circle and attached into the wall, reverted into it, are these timber uprights which form the roof. You'll see it has a nice little doorway here to keep the draft out, also made of timber. And these partitions inside, um, we have good evidence for these archaeologically. They are probably sleeping areas or storage areas within the large central um, house space. And you'll see right in the middle is a, is a hearth or a fireplace and that was the centre of the house. It also produced its light. Very often, um, Children will ask you where the smoke went, and where the smoke went is not through a hole, there's no hole, it just percolated up through the um, thatching, and it could also be used to smoke food as well. There's some evidence that up here in the roof space of houses, um, there might have been like a temporary platform, almost like an attic bedroom, and certainly you could smoke and food and store food in the smoke coming up from the chimney. They'd have been quite smoky places, um, but they would have been comfortable and warm in the, in the winter time. And during the summer months, certainly, people spent as much time as possible outside. Most roundhouses have, around the outside of them, um, paving or something similar that was a, a working floor. All activities possible took place outdoors. Obviously, you're not going to have access to a model like this yourself, but it's perfectly possible to find lots of pictures on the internet of roundhouses and to make your own, like the model that was made here by an eight-year-old. And there's a video of him making this available in the resources. So now you know what a roundhouse looks like, I'll talk you through the exercise that I do with primary classes. I recommend you set aside a morning or an afternoon for this. It works very well as a half a day project with a break in between. Okay, so the first stage is to allow the children to look at some pictures of roundhouses. We have um, in the resources a picture with some questions that can be prompts for the children to fill in or to talk through in class concerning roundhouses and what they look like and what they might have been like to live in. The next thing I do is I ask the children to turn that same piece of paper over and I ask them to draw a perfect circle. It's very difficult to draw a perfect circle but of course you need a perfect circle for your roundhouse to be perfectly round. But once they worked out how difficult it is to draw a perfect circle I show them an animation and um, it's available to you that shows them the construction of a roundhouse from scratch. It's a timber-built roundhouse and it goes through the various stages from building the walls to erecting the timbers and the scaffolding that allows you to put in the, um, the roof posts and so on and the wattle and daub on the exterior of the building. So I show that to the children once and sort of talk them through the stages of it. 
but because I want them to remember something about it, I go through it again and I ask them to prompt me as to the bits that are coming next. You can stop and start it on the way as you go. Because what they're going to do next is move out into the school hall or into the playground and act out that building sequence. Now, of course, you can't build a roundhouse, but what you can do is you can deal with a perfect circle and that can be done easily with some sticks and some string and some chalk. That's all you need. Somebody standing still in the middle with a stick and somebody moving around with the chalk and the string. Children love doing this activity in my experience. Everybody wants to hold the chalk. Everybody breaks it, so have plenty of chalk. But everybody wants to make the perfect circle. And then you have your perfect circle. And at that point, I ask the children to remember the various phases of the building. And they can have fun doing this, you know, they can be cutting down trees with imaginary axes and they can be remembering that you need scaffolding in the middle. I get them to all be the timbers around the outside of the building and I stand in the centre and be the scaffolding as it's going up. And at the end, on the outside of the building to make it watertight, is a mixture of wattle and daub, and that's basically straw and animal poo. This causes enormous hilarity and everybody has to go out into the imaginary farm and collect their animal poo, mix it up together and throw it at the walls of the roundhouse. They have a fantastic time doing this, but in, in doing it, just with their imaginations, they really get an understanding of the various phases that go into building the structure. I do recommend that you have two or three people for this activity because you need to build several circles depending on the size of your class. Have plenty of chalk because it will break and everybody wants to have a go at doing that stage of it but if you have one person centered in each roundhouse and guiding the children to remember the activities that should be fine in most classes of around 25 30 we usually build two and that works perfectly well so once the house is built and everybody's had a good think about it the next thing we do is go back into the classroom and the next stage is a cut and stick stage we have some templates of little cardboard roundhouses that you can use and it's a good exercise for everybody to cut out their own, put it together with sellotape or staples. I don't recommend glue because they don't hold together. Colours are good because they can decorate the um, roundhouses before they put them up. But everybody gets to make a little roundhouse. I usually have a cardboard box lid or something that can be used as a village base. And uh, as the session moves on, everybody's making their roundhouse, putting it into the little village that's being made. And there are numerous extension activities you can do with this rabbit straw to make the roofs. You can go out into the, um, the playground and pick up bits of leaves and so on. You can build fields, you can get the Lego um, bits and pieces out. In some schools I've done it with dinosaurs because we like being in the wrong time frame. You can, you can make a village and it helps them to understand thinking about farming in the Iron Age as well. That's, that's a very nice activity. Some children will finish their roundhouses quicker than others. Those can be tasked with making the village and drawing ponds and you know, those kinds of things, finding animals to put into the farmyard. And before you know it, you've got a really nice village. Finally, as a kind of bringing it all together exercise at the end, we've built a roundhouse virtually. We've built the little tiny cardboard roundhouses. There's an excellent video clip an animation that shows the, in cartoon form, the interior of a roundhouse. It's really fun to use. Children like it because you can move things about, you can look at people's bits and pieces within the roundhouse. It gives you a sense of the interior of the building. And there's always, there's a very fun bit with a spider that comes up and down and you can pretend that you're not seeing it. And you know the thing, children love it. But it gives them a sense of the interior of the building that they've been looking at so far, largely from the exterior. So, at the end of what should have been a really fun morning or afternoon, what's everybody learned? They've learned a good deal about Iron Age technology. It's very difficult to build a roundhouse where you don't have access to lots of metal tools, for example. They've learned about antler picks and so on. Even though it's the Iron Age, there aren't that many iron tools around. They'll have learned something about the aesthetics of Iron Age life it was a choice to live in circles and there's lots of things to be discussed about the inspiration for living in circles maybe nature the sun the moon so on inspired those choices they'll have learned something about iron age art by looking at the interior of the house and the kinds of objects that are inside it and they'll have learned something also about iron age farming and in building a little farm around their roundhouse they get an understanding of the fields and the social world of iron age societies 
and they will have a good understanding of some of the aspects of the challenges that Iron Age people faced, but also the fact that Iron Age buildings were actually rather nice and quite good places to live. <laughs>